Hello and welcome to my channel. Well, once again, thank you, Toby and family, for the Spin Wolf, which has not been open yet. I'm saving that for you. And uh, these two frost cutlery baby sunfish. So let's take a look at them. These are, um, one of them is. See if it can zoom in on here and tell you what it's supposed to say here. Two and seven eighths inch closed, high quality polished steel, stainless steel blades, fluted nickel silver bolsters, brass pin, white smooth bone, and this one is buffalo horn. Buffalo. All right, zoom back out a little bit. But yeah, these are cool. The first sunfish that I got was a Rough Rider sunfish, and it was a baby sunfish. And I hadn't had anything to compare with it. You know, you see things on in pictures and stuff, and you think, all right, a sunfish is just basically this size. And I didn't realize this is a baby sunfish, or the other one was. And uh, so it kind of turned me off because... This one is not bad, the pull on it. But uh, the one I had, the the Rough Rider one, it was in the Stonework series. That secondary blade, man, was a. This one's nice and easy, easy pull on it, and a good lockup on it. But the secondary blade on the other one was a nail breaker. Oh, this is cool, white down. Echoe River, I think is how you pronounce it. I'm not sure. But yeah, these are nice. They're almost like a canoe in size, a baby sunfish. Yeah, the secondary blades on these are fairly easy. Fairly easy pull. Alright, thank you. Those are going to be go along well with the other one. Alright, so here we go. We'll use the ma'am. Yes, ma'am. We'll use that to open this guy. i got to look at it with my eyeballs. So, so what happened last time I was doing things to the camera. Slicey. Slicing my finger. You slice your finger. You're no good. Alright. Let's put that up. Which end did I slice? <laughs> and is it this end? No. Is it this end? No. Oh yes it was. Right. Pull that out like that. Focus, you beanhead. I'll give you the, uh... It's got the specifications here. I told you, focus. Three and a half inch blade. Overall, seven and seven eighths inch. It's Aus 8A steel. It weighs 3.4 ounces. And it's three millimeter thick. I think that's the blade stock. It's three millimeter thick. All right, we'll get it out of the bubble. And it's a puko. It's a pocket puko. Now, I've watched some I watched some videos on this because this knife has been a, this particular type of knife has been around and one of the things about it is um there are very few inexpensive folding pocket pukos. You know, there are ones that cost a lot more. Then these, ooh, yes. And it's better to slow roll these. Now, the triad lock. Let me just, the way you should unlock it is have your finger up like this because this thing's going to come down and, and try to get you. But, I'm going to use two fingers. Oh, it, it's not as bad. It's not as bad as the, uh, the Recon 1 
when I had this thing, man, this thing is still fairly tight. It's, it's smoothed out a lot. I've used, I left it like this at like a 90 degree. I left it like that for quite a while to kind of help smooth that out. But let's get back to this guy. Now, the one of the other thing that I've read that people don't like is the, are, are these thumb studs. And another thing, this can be used as a bottle opener. Like that. Tink, cap lifter. All right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's sharp. Um, I got a piece of wood over here that we can try to do some carving with. I'm just giving my first impressions. This doesn't feel super grippy grippy like uh, like this G10. This was almost too aggressive. You can see where I just took some sandpaper and smoothed that out under the, there because that will tear your pocket up. Um, the other thing I've seen is people complain about this is not being super deep carry. I don't mind having a little bit of it sticking out. And you've got a hole here for a lanyard. So, I mean, the lanyard would be right there. But I'm not worried about trying to conceal this. Um, yeah, it feels good in my hands. Now, remember, I've got like a size 8 glove. Which is like a small to medium size hand. And for me... I have no issues. I had heard people have issues with this pointy part back here, but man, you gotta have pretty wide hands to have an issue with that. I'm not that wide. On these thumb studs, you can see the screw are supposed to come off because it is in the cutting path and the sharpening path. If you go to cut it, you know, try to make feather sticks or something, this might get in the way. This is all stuff that I've just you know, got from watching countless videos on the Finn Wolf. So now we have the Finn Hawk, the Finn Bear, and the Finn Wolf. Now, on the fixed blades, I really like the Finn Hawk. The Finn Wolf, I mean, the Finn Bear isn't, isn't bad, but uh, it's not a complete Scandi grind. It, it goes down and it, it has a secondary, you know, bevel down there this is a flat you know a zero bevel as you can see it's just one big edge and that makes it easier to sharpen now i heard that these are not too hard to take off these studs and uh i may do that just to see how that is because i'll probably just open this just like this you know I mean, if you think about it, this is usually a woodworking type of thing. So the chance of me needing to just pop this thing out with one hand is um, unlikely. And there's something you can do once that's open there. I think you can just stick a zip tie through there and give yourself something to, you know, lever off against, you know, and be able to open. Nice solid lockup. And this is a triad lock, too, so you usually don't have to worry about those failing. Man, this is solid. I'm getting no play, and I'm way out here for leverage. Three and a half inch. Yeah, I think I'm going to remove that because that would kind of, um, that would kind of annoy me, I think. You know, look how, how big they are. I mean, yeah. Anyways... So, yeah, I'll, I'll give you an update on that. But I like it. This is nice. It's very light feeling. This is just my initial impressions of it. Same kind of clip it looks like. It's on the... No, it's a little bit different. This one's curved and everything to go along with it. And they, they went for a higher up mounting spot. See, this is why I think a lot of people complain about lanyard holes is because basically the lanyard hole was it looks like was thought of first and then the clip and you know I like lanyards but 
you could have put a little hidden stud thing back here or something possibly to give people a deeper carry that want it me personally like i said i don't mind that gives me something to to grab i don't want to have to go all the way into my pocket and, and i don't think it's going to stick out too hugely or anything but i like it i really like it it's nice now they make these in different colors orange and um a reddish color i think i don't know how many others man my hand my hand falls right into that little notch right there my finger i mean just slips right in there if you want to choke up you can choke up let's see if it passes the bend test yeah you could do that you could put your index finger all the way to the end if you wanted to do some pointy things all right i don't know if you have to what how he measures it is it like you can't break the grip and do it i don't know anyways i'm not ben that's never been a thing with me is like the knife has to be short the blade has to be so short that it reaches the end of my finger um that's never been i, I can have longer blades it's no problem with me now some people say this is not a good blade <clears throat> type to edc um i think it'll it would be fine i have seen what happens when you try to cut it, apples and stuff like this with it because it'll do fine at first and then the thing's like a big wedge you know it'll just push it apart but the apple still gets cut so let's get a little piece of wood out here and see what we can do i'll have to switch to whiting some pallet wood well, there's a big huge chunk of it so i can't really get right up in there oh yeah <laughs> It'll do some carving. It's gonna make a mess. You're gonna make a mess, young man. Yes, I'm gonna make a mess, and I'm not that young. Ooh. Yeah, I'm getting no play in the blade. And yeah, it's having a, a good time pukoing away. Oh, we got to do some pukoing afterwards. All right. So yeah, um, pallet wood's not the best thing to try to feather stick with. And this is not really, you've probably never seen a feather stick where you rock it like that. But I'm just doing that to, to be silly, I guess. There we go. There's some better cuts for you. Stop cutting up over there. I'm warning you. Yeah, it's, it's great. There's some great carving there. Alright, now. One of the other things, we're going to take a close look at this. So we're going to switch it over. I had heard on some of the earlier models when they f were first coming out like about four or five years ago that they would get edge rolling off of easy, just simple stuff. I don't see any edge rolling. I'm going to try to cut with, I was using like this part of it so I'm not trying to cut with that paper. Paper will tell me usually. <laughs> wow. Sharp, sharp, sharp. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Now, some people poo-poo the steel. Yeah, it would be nice if it was, you know, like a little bit better and everything steel and stuff like that. But uh, I'll say it is fine. Um, especially if you take these studs off, you'll be able to strop it. Now, you can strop it without 
with the studs on and you can just use a croc stick stick to get in there you know to get past this but uh i've never been a huge fan of thumb studs anyway and i don't mind you know pulling it out and opening it up like this so we'll see we'll see I'm going to mess around with it a little bit and see if I really fall in love. It's, it's really easy to slow roll that. Oh, you see that? See that edge? That edge did... It was up here. Let's zoom in on that. Well, that's some pretty, you know, that's some fairly sharp... I mean, uh tough wood but yeah there's a little little bit of rolling going on there some people they the way they get around that i can feel a little bit on this side too um the way they get around that is they put a micro they put a micro edge on there um i'm gonna try to avoid that i think once you get past this may have just been the soft edge from the buffing you know because Whenever you're uh, polishing the edge or, or buffering it and everything, you can eat it up. And especially towards the edge right here, there's very little me uh, metal to dissipate the heat. And you can wind up getting it softer. But yeah, you can see. Oh, well, you know, that's, that's what happens. You wouldn't have seen that just cutting paper. You wouldn't have noticed that. Puko! It's still good at pukoing. Puk. Puko. Oh, let's get some hobo armor up here. We gotta have a complete test. Alright, we'll we'll double it. We'll double up the armor. This is double hobo armor. Puk. Oh, it's it really did um uh, stop it after the I mean, got a little puncture there, but... What's that here? Puko! Oh, yeah. Puk! Two layers. You need two layers of hobo armor. I mean, it still gets stuck. It still comes out the other end. But I had to jab pretty hard. Not, not as hard as if I threw my whole body weight into it and everything. When I was going to go through the table and you know, I've already damaged myself enough recently with a knife so right so yes this is a very nice knife very nice I'll put it so, through some more tests and stuff and uh, I'll sharpen it and we'll try cutting some more pallet wood with it and see what that edge does but uh, yeah I'm, I, I like it the folding puko. Is that a puko in your pocket? Or are you just happy to see me? Well, I am happy to see you. But it's also a puko in my pocket. Folding puko. I can fold it up if it scares you. There you go. Well, thank you for watching. I had old Boris buried over there underneath all the stuff. You bury me up! In Russia, we use Pukos. Pukos are used by Russian syndicate. It's an intimidation factor. Thank you for watching, and have a nice day. Alright, so I took that stud out. This is iodine all over the place. I took the stud out, and it's, um, you know, it's female and male. So, if you put a screw on this, and you got to turn it, when it's first on there, this will turn also. So I stuck this in a vise. Opened up the blade, stuck it in a vise. Unscrewed it. Um, which was good. Because I sharpened this blade again. It did have an edge roll. Right where I um, ran into that. You know, or where I was carving. It was about, about an inch wide. So, I just took some croc sticks, laid them across here, and just went, ee, ee, and then hit it on a strop. Puko. And it's like super sharp now. Um, 
But that was kind of odd because that wasn't really hard using it, you know. That was just like one piece of wood. And uh, I'm going to do it again here in a little bit. I just want to cut some cardboard with it before we get into the hardwood and see if, see if that. So let's get some. Let's switch over to a wider angle. We're on a wider angle now. Puko! Ooh, Puko him to the hilt. Puk. Oh, oh man, this thing just slides right through. Cross cut. This guy got out of the way. Puko! Puk, Puk, Puk. Yeah, pretty good Pukoing. Alright, let's look at the edge. Any damage. Alright, let's try this again. We'll get out the pallet wood isn't super duper strong. I think it's like pine or something. Alright, let's push on it. Let's get this over here. Let's do some feather sticking. It was probably maybe going like that. That wiggling, you know, that I was doing. Let's get some, some bear into it. That could have had something to do with it, too. Because you don't see a lot of people doing that when they want to whittle. They don't go, hoo, 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 and you've got a really thin edge. I'm not making excuses for it. I'm just saying. I put it through some weird stuff that... Not normal. So if it does it again this time, I haven't wiggled it. As you can see, I'm just shaving. Just shaving wood here. What are you up to? Nothing. Just shaving. Shaving wood. Alright. I'm not noticing any hot spots on the handle when I'm doing this. Uh, my thumb. <laughs> this is a hot spot from pushing on a blade, but you need to for this thick. It's fairly dense stuff. I don't think they laminate it or anything, but you can see the grain. All right. Now let me switch to regular, and we'll look at the edge. All right. Well, you saw where I was at. Let's do some zoomage. Nah, it didn't... Uh... It didn't roll like the last time. It doesn't look like. I'm just feeling across with my fingers on there. Yeah, so my suggestion would be if you buy a knife and you're going to go out bushcrafting with it and everything, just get some fairly dense wood, not paper or whatever, and uh, and carve with it first. You know, because if your edge rolls, that's when you want to find out that, uh, you know, do all your maintenance then. But I think it's going to be all right now. Let's try some, some more sandwich stabbing. Oh, yeah. I can feel a little bit. I can feel a little bit of grab. But not bad. I mean, it's it's leaving clean cuts. So yeah, I think I think what got that was what got that edge to roll a lot was me doing this while I'm cutting. You know, I think that's what it was. That's my thought. That's my theory. I'd rather blame me. But yeah, there you go. There's an update. Don't want to make this too long. And uh, yeah, this triad lock is not super bad. This clip is pretty strong. It grabs pretty strongly. And I don't mind this thing being missing here. I was going to put a, a zip tie in there, but I can't find. I can't find one that small. I've got a huge zip tie, but I don't have any small zip ties. So I snap to it. Nice snappage. But I'm not going to miss the thumb stub because too often I go like this. Eh. Not on this knife, but I've, I've done on other knives. I go eh. 
and the blade comes out partially and then stops and my thumb is out over here somewhere pretty close to the edge so yeah very nice knife i'd i'd recommend it for like you know if you have a as your backup puko a backup puko because you never know when you need a backup a backup plan thank you for watching and have a nice day